Welcome back to Lady Babylon. Tonight we have a Bible study with a treat. Um, we are going to feature in our salon tonight, in our templum, we are going to feature Matthias Ferrari, who will be working on, as we speak, the very image, the very image of she whose him we are reading. Um, yes, so we're taking ourselves tonight to the initiation. Um, welcome, Matthias. I'm just going to tell you to leave Matthias a tad enigmatic. I'm going to tell you that he is being tested. He is being tested to see if he is worthy of the Ferrari who made the sculpture of Bruno. Yeah, Ettore, I, I want to see. We're here to see the devil is testing him. Tonight, with his hands, he is breathing life into the image of the Virgo, the naked virgin. Welcome to the naked virgin. Virgin. I'm going to jump right in tonight with our text. I want us, this is Bible study, so of course we're going to open tonight with a Bible verse, and I want us to all go to, go to that text. Hutos kar egapes en hotheos ton cosmon, hoste ton huion ton monogene edoken, hena pas hopisteon es auton me apoletai al eche doen ionion. Mateus, uh, hit your mute button for a second. So this is our opening. This is our opening passage. This is our Bible passage. It's the famous John 3.16 that you see at every football game held up on the sign. And I just want you to notice that God loved the world and gave his monogenes. His monogenes. Should we bring us back up the passage again? I want you to look at, look at the word monogenes. It's on the... Second line, second line, and it's the third word in monogene in the form here. Yeah, because it's an accusative. Uh, those of you in class, excellent. Um, but I want you to look at that word, and I want you to remember that word. What is the only begotten? What is the only begotten of God? What is it? There are those people out there who believe Christianity. They are believers. And they believe Christianity came ex nihilo in the first century, just poof. It was there on the scene. And for those of us who study reason and don't have the belief, we know that this does not happen. That there, there is not a religious framework that is born complete without having built upon the terminology of its predecessors. Remember, Judaism and Christianity are Bronze Age Saturnian offshoots. Offshoots. A mute. Great. You'll have to pardon me. We're having a terrible internet night tonight here at the base of the Colorado Rockies. Um, it's exciting, but it's a little bit annoying. Hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, I'll be back if I have to disappear for moments. Um, Chewy, hit the first verse from the hymn to Athena because we're looking for this monogenes. And I want you all to take a look at this. Take a look at this. Pallas. Monokienes megalu dios ek gone simne. And we look at that second word and we see that it's the monokienes. Now, dialectical differences play with vowels. So that's why we get the mu in the front of the monokienes instead of the monokienes. But don't worry, 
It's just the difference between something like Attic and Ionian. Yeah, two different dialects. Fantastic. The only born, the only born, right? Pallas, the only born. Who is Pallas? This is Athena we are invoking. Tonight, we are in Attica. Tonight, we are in the deem where we worship the naked virgin. And in this deem, we call her Pallas. And that word Pallas, people are so terrible with this word. Um, it's uh, the, the origin of it. It's beautiful. Um, the Pallas is that Cora, is that pre-developed Cora who carries the spear, who carries the spear, that pre-adolescent Cora that carries a spear. And you say, wait a minute, who is this that you're talking about? This is the girl whom we release from the head of Zeus. We, we take the axe of Hephaestus and we slice open Jehovah's head and from Jehovah's head springs the new ruler who possesses all that belongs to Jehovah. This is her and she is the palace. Um, the Romans absorbed the concept with Pilex. Um, and it's the image of the girl who is not yet marriageable. And how do they, she's not in a Phoebe yet, right? She's not marriageable. So she's premarital. She's not developed, hence the virgin. And why we protect her because she is not yet marriageable. She is in that state. Now, wait a minute. She bursts from the head of Zeus. And when she does, she makes both mortals and immortals quake, shake. The image is a shaking. The image is what you feel when you get hit by the, by the wave of sound that hits you when thunder is, is there. Thunderstruck. This is thunderstruck. That fear that paralyzes you in place. That is what the palace brings to you. And you say, how can this palace, this monogenes, this child of God, how can this child of God, which was originally a daughter of God, how can this daughter bring complete quaking and shaking in us? She is the one who emerges. She is the one who emerges from the head. Yes, she is that daughter of Metis. She is that daughter of that reasoning. She is the daughter of that intellect. Yes, and she comes into the world in that form. And you say, this is not scary. This is not scary to me. I don't see. Remember, this daughter, this 12-year-old is actually six foot tall and carries a a spear and exercises naked. We'll see this. We'll see this. And how can she do that? Remember where you are. Remember where you are. You are in a song. You are in a song that is being sung during a mystery performance. The images that you are receiving, you are receiving from the throne. You are seated upon the throne of Saturn, receiving these images. How is it scary? Remember, she's six foot one because we've been giving her hormones ever since she was seven. Seven is the starting age. Pallas means priestess of Athena who carries the spear. Priestess of Athena who carries the spear. And she has been on hormones through the venoms that we're giving her since she was seven years old. And now she's 12, 13 years old on the cusp of what would naturally be for those of us who are not Medusae, those of us who are not under the regimen, would, um, we would start entering at 12, 13 years old, um, 14, we're finished and we're getting married. We've cycled normally for a year. Everything's good. We're getting married. She's in that pre-stage, but we've been giving her the drugs that are turning her into something. 
it causes her skin to become rough or harsh. They call it scaly in Greek, scaly. She loses sight during the day because of the brightness. She's known to inhabit the caves. We call her the half virgin, half viper or the echidna. Yes, the echidna. So let's look some more at the hymns. Let's look some more as she emerges from the artist's hands. This is like creation. It's gorgeous. Okay, the second, um, the first line again, please, from Pallas. Yes, Pallas Monogenes, she who is that only begotten daughter of God. Yes, and by the way, there's another word that comes with Pallas. Um, to, to, to be from, it means to be from the great father. Obrium, obrimo pater, right? From that great thundering father. There is no word for the son, only the daughter. This is a female centered cult that is creating these terms that Jesus is using somewhere between 500 to 900 years after the Greeks are performing their mysteries. Right? They're mysteries. Excellent. Excellent. Let's read the line. What is she? She is the ekgonesimne, the holy product or offspring of great Dios, Zeus, of great Zeus. And when I say Zeus, I'm referring to Jupiter himself. I'm re um, uh, uh, re rever referring to um, the Jehovah. Yes, the Deus, the Deus, yes, the Deus. And we have her name on the second line because we're invoking her, Dia, Dia. Do you see the Dia on the front here? Dia. Now, I'm going, Rat King will love this because we were talking about this today, but I will go ahead and not give you, not give you the secret name because Dia hides a secret name that if you know how to use this secret name, if you know the name, you can then manipulate that force. If you knew what Amon meant, you could control Amon. The knowledge, the phronesis is what brings you that ability okay, from the throne. Excellent, excellent. The phronesis. Good. Um, Makaira Thea, she is, but I'm not going to give you a secret name from Dia. I, I will let you know, though, that Dia is a female form that the Zeus is taken from. It's old, old, old Mycenaean. It's the Dewa or the Dewanasa. Oh, love it. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. That's why they walk around calling. Medea, the Diwanasa. Yeah, the Diwana. Diwana, isn't that nice? The Diana. Ooh, love it. Because what comes out of Jehovah's head? People are surprised. What comes out? She does. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Polymoclone, right? Clonos is a disruption in your guts on the medical side. That wind that you get on your inside, that wind that comes up that causes you to defecate. Yes, the storm, that wind is the Klonos. And the pollen root here, it just means war. She is the one who engages in the storm of war, the storm of war, the obrimothume. She has brimos. She has, that's from the word brimo in Greek. And it means to thunder, to shake, to create that loud voice, that loud voice that stuns. Oh, primo, thume. It can also be the beat of the heart, the beat of the heart. She has the thunderous heart. Fantastic. Remember, she's holding it. She's holding the heart of Dionysus. Good. Um, in the next line, next uh, verses here that we have up. Great. Arete rete. Uh-oh, we've got some magic going on. For those of you who are keeping track now, we're performing a magic little device here. 
Watch what we're doing. Arete rete, the unspoken and the spoken. The unspoken and the spoken. We're using both sides of the magic. For those of you familiar with esoteric magical texts like the PGM, you'll understand what's going on here. We are using the opposites. It's poles. It's the manipulation of poles. Arete rete. Arete rete. And remember, this is a song that you're singing into the ear of the one who is seated on the throne. That one is bound. And when you're entering into this meter, you're binding that one with your song. They said in these mystery performances, the song was more important than even the drugs, right? Even the communion, the song was most important. Yes. Oh, rhythmic, 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 rhythmic. Beautiful. So um, uh, uh, what else is she? She is the Megal Onume, the one with the great named, right? The Antrodiaite, the one who exists in your antrum. What is your antrum? Your antrum is the center point of your temple. Your antrum is the center point of your temple. So the cult image, the cult image is what is preserved in that central place. That is where she works. Nice. If you climb the hill of the Acropolis up to the Parthenon, you can reach that focal point, that antrum. Yes, originally this is a cave. This is a cave, all right? Excellent. Um, remember, Medusa is the priestess of Athena. Yeah, yeah, right? Excellent. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going because if we want to see the Savior, that's who we're looking for. Who is this Savior? Who is this only begotten of God? Yeah, Hediepes Oxus. What does she do? She travels these high mountains, these high mountains, the focal point. She is at the focal point of the mountain with the imagery is great here, with her head thrown back, with her head thrown back, ah, bordering on the word can also mean pride. Right? N not necessarily in a bad way. Um, almost a strutting. A strutting. Excellent. And on the next line, on the next line, please. Yeah, um, one before that. Yes. Um, so there we are. One after that. <laughs> yeah, Ede Orea, right? Ede Orea Ski Oenta. She also masters those shaded mountains. Those shaded mountains. You didn't think Athena was the mistress of the shaded mountain, did you? No, but now you do. And she focuses her mind. She focuses her mind upon not only the mountain, but the meadows, right? Not only the ridges, but the meadows where the cities are built, where the villages are, 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 are developed over time. She is the one who works there. Are we seeing Athena? There's a lot more to the only born than you thought. And this only born is prophesied of. We know it because Jehovah says, I'm going to be overcome by my monogenes. And that's why he consumes her mother. He consumes her because he doesn't want to get overthrown. He doesn't want to get overthrown. Jehovah is a poopy guy. He's a poopy guy and he wants to stay in power. He doesn't want to relinquish his power, right? So um, this is the way of forcing him to relinquish it, to give her the birth. And this comes through the Hephaestus, right? It comes through the craft. How do you open the head of Jehovah to give birth to his daughter? Yeah, we'll do one more line and we'll check in. We'll check in um, with uh, 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 Matthias. I want you to see on the next line. Yes, at the bottom there, 
Hopla Jares, right? She is the one who, you know, she's delighting in the Hopla, the weapons. She loves the weapons. She's always pictured with that spear. When she comes out of Zeus's head, the monogenes, she comes out naked, carrying one thing, one thing on. She got no helmet. She got no shield. She got nothing. She has a spear, and it scares us all. Here's this six-foot tall um, hybrid viper girl. It must have been spectacular in antiquity to see her. It must have been spectacular to know one of these viper girls and to be like, wow, I'm you know, impressed. Um, their eyes supposedly were bloodshot all the time. And they used these poisons that they put in their hair and or archers. They're an archer horse culture. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, that, is, that, that's, that sounds cool to me. Um, yeah, and um, what's the very next part of that line? Oistrusa. I told you guys. The Sigma Tau Rho root, the STR, Oistrusa. Right? She's causing mania. She's causing estrus. Right? What is she putting into estrus? Psychas, the souls, broton, of men. The souls of men. And where is she taking them? Into maniasi. Maniasi, excuse me. Into mania, into maniac states. You didn't think Athena, the builder of the polis. You didn't think that she was the architect of mania, did you? She is. She is the architect of mania. Yes. Okay. Okay. Gorgeous. One more. One more line. I want to get one more line in. Gumnusa. Sorry. Gumnazu sacore. Fricode thumon ehusa. Yeah. Gumnazusa. That's where we get the naked from the naked virgin. What does that mean, the naked virgin? It means the one who exercises naked, which is not, un, you know, the concept of exercise and being naked is welded together in the Greek. So um, when I am exercising, um, I am doing it naked. You know, when you run the Olympic events, you're running naked, right? And they're doing it uh, through Hera, the worship of Hera. The women are doing it. Um, I would argue probably before I'll let the, I'll let the folks who write books about such things make their declarations, but probably before the, um, the male was the female, uh, version. So this virgin who exercises naked is not, you know, the gymnast. She is not necessarily an odd, uh, uh figure. This is not strange for us to envision. Right, it's not strange for us to envision. Good, and she has that thumon, having that thumon that is her chest, her heart, her inner spirit. Her inner spirit causes the quaking. Causes the quaking. Okay, so we have a Cora. We know that sh she's this hybrid. She is the only born of the supreme ruler she alone shares his traits yeah it's it's gorgeous um let's let's uh let's get the scoop here on our image and um just ask Matthias here Matthias um is there any is as you are working and as the art is coming through your hands is this um like when you made the sculpture of the snake goddess as a as a younger as a 13 year old, you know, and you bring coming up with the images in your mind and they're just kind of working themselves out organically. Um, um, tell us what's going on here with this. Is this inspiration that you're going through? What is this? Yeah, this is really fun actually, now that you mentioned it. Yeah, so a couple of things, like um, when you mentioned her having only a spear, um, I actually, I used the tool that I was sculpting with and I put it in her hand and it almost went on pretty naturally. It looks pretty good on her too. So it was like she was meant to be holding it. And also like, uh, um, yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, she looks really good. This is like a sketch, right? This is like, um, you know, I'm not going for the, the finish here. I'm just really going through this for the process um for the 
the presentation you're giving. Um, so I'm not worried about finishing it as much as I am worried about just like um, it, like trying different things and having fun with what I'm doing. And yeah, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> you you're remaining faithful to the image, aren't you? And um, just as Athena is worshipped on Helicon, where the Temple of the Muses is, then we know that their worship is. I mean, th look at look at this artist working, right? I want I had the privilege of watching Matthias produce from just the rough clay, just nothing. It was like watching Michelangelo. Um, bring those images out of the stone. And Mateus, could you do us one big favor? And do you have this the sketch that you made uh, of the echidna first? Could you show us the sketch? Maybe hold that up to your camera. Yeah, okay. I do. So this is her right here. I have plenty of these sketches, really. If I had been better prepared, I wouldn't have had a bunch of them. But um, this is more or less what she's supposed to be looking like or what you know, this is like the rough sketch of um, what she's supposed to look like. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And of course, Mateus is very, is very uh, humble about his work. And it's just a sketch, right? It's, it's just a sketch. Well, it's a um, pretty fantastic and uh, um, um, talented sketch. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the next verse and see if we can take our words and put them into this clay, into this breathing, um, this thing that's happening. Yeah, so um, on the next line, Gorgophone. She is the Gorgophone. Um, oh, it got cut off at the top a little bit. Maybe it's a... Yeah, yeah, there we go. Gorgophone, right? What is she? She's the killer of the Gorgon. She's the killer of the Gorgon. Who is that Gorgon? That Gorgon is her own priestess, right? That Gorgon is her own priestess it is from the footprint of that priestess's offspring that comes from her severed head it is from that offspring that the hippocrine the fountain of the muses flows okay remember pythagoras said you want to found a city in antiquity he's not talking myth he's talking to people who are out going to take their supplies get into a ship go up go across the Mediterranean to North Africa and start a Greek colony. And they're like, what should we do? And he's like, number one, the first thing you do before anything else, build a temple to the muses, build a temple to the muses and your civilization will begin, right? You'll have justice that way. Okay. So here she is. The, the one who brings that fountain. Yeah. 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 She's the one who fugolectre. She's the one who does not go to the bed of reproduction. She does not. Why? She's the Virgo, right? She is not ready. She is perpetually. You didn't realize that, that the only begotten daughter of God was the perpetual virgin, did you? No, she is, right? Perpetual virgin. She shuns that bed. Shuns that bed, right? Right, she's the polu olbe technon meter. She is the mother of all skill. Techne, techne. If you want to, if you want to stitch fabrics in order to make a textile that displays a story on it, you have to work with her. She is the source of that. Isn't that great? I'm I'm beginning to I'm beginning to see all the angles of this individual and um, it's gorgeous. Yes, on the next next line, I talked about hormones. I talked about hormones before. Here's the Greek. Here's the Greek hormastera, 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 sotera, savior, hormastera. She who brings the impulse. She who brings the hormone, she who brings the push. You can't take your child and give her, dedicate, they call it dedication. Give her to the temple of Athena unless you expect that they will bring out in her that invincible medic or medusic virgin. Medusa just means to rule. It just means to rule. When you create that six foot one hybrid, 12 year old hybrid, 
you have created a ruler, a ruler with a greater capacity than you have up here, greater capacity up here than you have. Frene. Yeah. Good. Good. Let's see what happens. I, I bet it does something to the brain. And I bet those priestesses end up. It's why they're always deciding what colony is going to go where and what the judgment is. And they br you bring in this murderer and they're like, what do we do with this guy? He killed someone. And she tells you, why are they doing this? Why does Western justice spring up in her courtroom? The Greeks made a huge deal out of this through Aeschylus with the Oresteia. In the last play of the Oresteia, it's called the Eumenides. They transform the, the Furies into the Eumenides. And how do they do it? Through Athene, through Athena, the virgin. Yeah. Do you see? It's not fairy tale. We're talking about people in time. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about ritual and performance. And we're talking about a hybrid girl who is handing down judgments and telling you the future. Wow. This is fan Athena. Athena is not what she thought she was. Is she? Okay. Um, Metis. At the end of that line, Metis. Metis is who she's born from, right? Metis. That mind. That capacity. That is not masculine. It is feminine mental capacity. Love it. It's love it. Gorgeous. What is she? She's an iolomorph. Oh, that's interesting. What if you trace the different iolomorphs, you'll understand what class she belongs to. She takes the different forms. She has the spots on the skin, like the spotted serpent. Have you ever seen her legs? It's a tail of a spotted serpent. Isn't that isn't that gorgeous? That's fantastic. Lamia, right? It's it's the Lamiatic. You know, she comes from North Africa. She is Tritigonea, after all, right? The one from Triton, the lake, right? <laughs> right? Beauty, be beautiful. Okay, anyway, um, and right after Iolomorph, right after Iolomorph, want to make sure you're getting, nope, next one. Bump. Yep, there we go. Look what I've underlined in red. Yeah, Drakina. Did you know Athena was a Drakina? The Drakina is the Draco. Yeah, the serpent. Um, the, the one who has the combination of the milk and the blood. And you say, milk? How is she milking? Yes, we are milking her. She is nursing. Right, because she has this, this hybrid has this chemical that we so value, the galene that comes from her breasts, and they're described as grape like. Grape like, there's an exudate from them that we use. Remember, she's been on venom since she was seven. And how do they, oh, by the way, how do they put them on venom? Um, what I have seen textually is lateral. Slits, lateral slits that are covered up with a drug impregnated uh, bandage. Yeah, so you go for the day and you get your you get your bandage right, and you get your make your cut. So these aren't it's not bleeding. Make a cut until it bleeds, and then right do it right medication. And she's shown that right by the older priestesses. So um, when and when she's at that age at seven, that's when she's brought in. So this is a process of building someone. Yes, yes, building the only born. And remember, you are not to enter the bed. You're not to enter the bed of mating, we'd say. To them, the image of the bed was the image of that coupling, of that coming together. And you weren't supposed to do that. And if you did, you lost your head, right? And what is... She, what is this holy virgin gymnast? What does she wear on her chest, on the skin that's on her chest? She wears the head of the Medusa. Nice, nice, nice. 
gorgeous, gorgeous. How's our head coming along? Do we have a medusic head? Don't you love the gyrations? When whenever Matthias is able to to bring life to her, he moves her around, and you see, you can see he's able to bring out because he has that art. He's able to bring out that emotion, that image, that feeling. Um, this is why we need artists, man, to make our idols, right? Thank you. This is antiquity, bro. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, what is after Drakina? Bring up Drakina again. What is after Drakina? She's not only the serp, the 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 serpent queen. She is also feel in the. And Dr. Ruck, those of you who know Dr. Ruck will like it. By the way, I saw some people posted some stuff about Dr. Ruck um, and uh, like it. They like his work. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Um, he was the one that I stood with in Boston when we were talking about Harvard. Um, and uh, his research is, of course, outstanding because he works with the sources, right? He doesn't, you can't, you can't get by anything with him. He's a scientist, right? He brings you the sources. Anyway, um, uh, Dr. Ruck coined the word um, entheogen, right? In being in theos, being the god and gin producing, right? So what is an entheogen? An entheogen is a substance that produces the god within. Now, this is not, this is, it's not like he just said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cram some bases together and coin a word. Ha ha. Good for me. Right? No, he didn't do that. Right? This concept of entheosis, right? Um, in our text here, in our text, in fe, right? Feel in fe. She loves that in filling. She loves it when the God becomes one with you. Of course, that makes sense because that's what the priestess is doing. She is becoming Athena so that when she has you under her spell, when she's got you bound and drugged and she is singing in your ear with that obrimo fume, with that thundering, powerful, powerful voice. Yeah, um, she is the Athene. She is the Athene, right? Wow, all I knew, all we knew about Athena was she's on the top of this Acropolis. It's the woman symbol of the Athens and her freedom. Yes, yeah, that's what we thought. But wait a minute, where are all the snakes and where are all the what is all the ritual? Right? And what is what what is she doing? She's inspiring us, right? She's the mother of the arts, the virgin mother of the arts. The virgin mother of the arts. That's why she hangs around the temple of the muse. Right, Temple of the Muse, perfect. Okay, and the last word, Aglautime. Um, Flegraion, Altera. I'm going to take you down to the Giganton. She's the fighter of the giants, right? The dispeller of the giants. She's the horse motivator, the horse completer, the horse driver. She's that Tritogenea. She's the destroyer of the Kakon or the, the dissolver of the Kakon. No, no such thing as pollution. Around this, around this only born. There's no pollution. You can't. She can't stand in the presence of it, right? She's in that antrum. She's in that center of that temple. Good. And then finally, um, yes, she's the victory bringing daimon, victory bringing daimon, or Athena Nike, they call her, right? The bringer of the victory. That's her. And finally, um, she's nocturnal and uh, uh, day of the day. She's both of day and nights, serving the ores, serving the hours. And what does that mean? When you say serving the hours, all of a sudden you project yourself back into the Bronze Age with the worship of the ore. The ore is the sun and the moon and the stars. It is the sun and the moon and the stars. You should see in her this royal beginning, the sun and moon and stars. Finally, the last three lines. Um, Kluthi mu, Kluthi mu, Kluthi mu el homenu. Um, um, listen to me, hear me praying. Now, you, this is in the voice of the initiates, right? As they're singing. Hear me praying. Give, give the peace. 
provide the peace, provide the koron. And people will translate this as wealth. It's not. It's satiety. Koros is satiety. Okay. Yeah, it's the sufficiency. Give the sufficiency. Peace, sufficiency, health, hugeon. Yes. And in these blessed orais, in these hours, right? At these times, what is he? She's glauch off. She has that, it's often described as steel blue or gray. They don't really understand um, what this word means, though. Steel blue or gray ops eyes. So they call her the gray eyed, the gray eyed. But that gray eyed, that epithet, the gray eyed, belongs to that gorgophonic group, right? The ones that bring that magic. That's their gray eyed appearance. Gray eyed. It's a thing. It, the ops is what you look. You look in my, the ops is what you look into when you confront the goddess, when you stand before her, you are in her ops. And her ops is gray, steel blue. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. How about the, um, yeah, she's the one who knows all the skill, man. She's got all the skill. If you want the skill, you go into her. And she is the Poluliste Basilea, the queen who is most prayed to, the one who is the really accepts those that form of communication, right? That prayer. She is the one that you can bind, that you can work with if you know her secret name. Yes, the half girl or virgin half virgin half viper um, and if you get 12 of these together in a group you're invincible you're absolutely invincible 12 archeresses with po poison bows who use venoms not only do they use venoms but as you can see from our sculpture she was raised on venom she was raised on venom so she is a different form you didn't know Humanity was capable of this form, did you? Now you, maybe you understand why they worshipped her, why they worshipped her, why they brought her out, why they took the children of um, the aristocracy, why they put them through, if they had the perfect qualifications, why they put them through this regimen in order to reach this process of the of the virgin. Yeah. The virgin Lamia. Yeah. It's um, absolutely, ab absolutely the pinnacle of the combo of drugs and cult. And it is the mystery. If you talk about Christianity as a mystery and you fail to recognize what a mystery is, you have no clue. You're believing the fairy tale. Right, you're following the fairy tale. You're not looking at history and reason. You're looking at the fairy tale. Your faith will lead you to the fairy tale to accept it. Reason will lead you to the reality. Right? And there's no question of whether or not you want to accept the reality because the reality doesn't care. Judaism and Christianity are the offshoot are the offshoot of this oracular mystery. She is Bronze Age. She is before you and she manifests herself in the queen. Yes, in the queen. All of this pharmacology goes back somewhere. And every signpost that I've seen points directly to Colchis, to the witch Medea, who is developing the echidna. She alone, we know, she alone can breathe that fire. Yes, gorgeous, gorgeous. Give me the ability. Iason, Iason. People will tell you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one more thing, and then I'm gonna check back in with Rob because I want to see the magic is is happening. We we want to see that image, um, and we don't want to get lost in the fairy tale. We just want to know what those people were doing. We want to, we want to push it. 
And we want to say, who, who is she? What does she look like? Where does she stand? What does she do? Um, how did she affect history? And when you follow, when you, um, when you follow the language through the medwa, right? Medwa and Medusa are the same root. They're the same root. Medicine. Where we get our word medicine, it's the same root. And you you look at lexicographers, and they'll they'll argue about um, maga and mada, and where those ultimately come from. And just long story short, the mada is the moistness. It is the dew. It is the manna that you reap from between her legs. Yeah, they were using these chemicals. They were using them in rites. And if you are a Christian. You are not part of a mystery for any reason. You are part of a mystery because that is the history that your religion and its practices developed. And Jesus stood there and said, I am the monogenes. When he did that, when his apostles wrote that he was the monogenes, they were claiming a right to a throne, to the throne of God. And now you understand. Now you understand. Let's look at, let's look at the image. Um, tell us a couple of words here, Matthias. Tell, tell, give us a couple of words about how you're feeling as you make, as you, as you bring, bring to life. What kind of, um, tell us about her that you're, that you're making for a couple of minutes, just, you know, free form. Yeah, sure. I kind of want her to be a little bit like she's uh, like a, she's doing some kind of interrogation. So a lot of the times when I'm playing around with her, I'm sort of seeing how you would how like somebody if she were huge, right? She were like six foot tall. How she would look to somebody if they walked up to her, like if she's asking a question or. If she's about to attack or something. Because right now she's just standing there. But I'm wondering, like, when somebody looks at her, how, did, how should they feel? And I want to know that power of the thing that you're using there with the S curve. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, the S curve. Yeah, so the S curve is something that, like, it gives it a really like interesting shape. It puts your hips forward, your shoulders back. This is like what you'll see what models will do. So they'll walk like this. And it just elongates the body and it gives it a lot of like expression. So it gives it a, a really sort of elegant expression to the body. Instead of her just being standing regularly, she sort of loses a little bit of the intensity of her body. I noticed that you've captured the combination of her masculinity and femininity. She's supposed to be female possessing masculine traits, which I think is a reflection of her choric status. And you have captured that. You have really, you have really, bravo. You've really captured that because I look at different parts of her and I'm trying to identify masculine, feminine, age. And I see that you've, you've honed in. You've, you've honed in on that power of that, of that perfect combination, right? That perfect combination. Um, yeah, why don't you tell me about, um, why don't you tell me about the um, snakes? And um, yeah, that hand, uh, by the way, Mateus, look at that hand, everyone. Look at that left hand. I mean, uh, wow. I mean, that says a lot and it says different things from different angles. I want to bring up, I said before, we're going to talk about um, Mr. Ferrari, Ettore Ferrari, right? Ferrari, right? Mm -hmm. And his, um, here he is. Watch how he did the same thing. Like when you look at her head, when you look at the angle that it is, if you rotate the angle of her head, you'll see different positions of power. You'll see different poses in her. And, um, um, and for example, if we got under her head and we're looking at her from, from the ground up as if she is looking at us with, you see how as, as Mateus changes the shape, all of a sudden a new emotion 
comes comes into the face. Let's see. Let's see if he's meeting up with his ancestor. Um, yeah. Let's see if you're an ancestor. Let's see if we can call you the seed uh, of Ferrari. Um, can we show Giordano Bruno that for, who Ferrari made? Yeah, you see that? Mm. What about that? What about that angle there? Isn't that lovely? Does that do anything for you? That's that's the particular statue, Mateus. Yeah, of course. It's pretty inter it's interrogating you, right? So you're looking up at him and he's looking down at you. And I'm sure that the sun positions itself behind him, so it's like he's backlit and it looks holy, you know. You see? And he's he's in this like dark hood. He looks down at you. He's sort of it's almost like he's asking you a question, he's interrogating you. I really like that about this this um this statue. Especially because I don't know much about Giordano Bruno, but I know he was a pretty intense guy. Um, so I think that this is like, it does a lot of like, just in terms of the intensity of the, of the pose and the intensity of the, of the look and the intensity of the angle that this, that this um, statue is positioned is like really speaking to his like nature. And where did where did Ferrari, um, or, or you know, he made the statue, but they placed it in a specific square. Wasn't it the square where they burned him alive? Yep, it's in Rome. So I'm not sure what the name of the square is, but yeah, it's the exact place. And um, the the Catholic Church, you know, wasn't really happy about that, but um, it, there wasn't much they could do. And from what I hear, and from what I hear, um, poor, poor G. Bruno, we'll just call him G. Bruno. Poor G. Bruno was um, brought up on some kind of impiety, some kind of charge against the church. Um, he was, he was, who knows what it was, you know, actually for, right? right. But he was saying, he was saying things about planets, about other planets, and about the life that was on those other planets out there, and. We know that that angered the church because it it throws off um, their cosmogony, right? We don't we're, their cosmogony is suddenly incomplete, and I'm not talking about the church's cosmogony isn't the Orphic cosmogony, right? They have that they, they created their own in the Middle Ages because the Orphic cosmogony that started the mystery um, was pagan, and they wanted to re uh, to assert some sort of um, hey, no, this is originally our days of creation or our days of creation, right? And even though we're starting with the earth and Uranus, right? <laughs> um, we're going to give you a new impression of that cosmogony. So um, it didn't fit. It didn't fit all the planets. Those of you who are out there, and there are a lot of educated um, people on this um, channel, and those of you who are educated and who, uh, who know some Bruno, and I know that there are those of you who are out there, um, uh, you may be able to appreciate this um, a little bit with, I don't know, I may just throw out an ass, a golden ass to you. And um, who knows, maybe the Ferrari, you think the Ferrari image was an ass, a golden ass first? What do you think, Mateus? A golden ass first, the Ferrari image of what? Exactly, like the the Giordano Bruno sculpture. No, I'm talking about the horse uh, on the um, golden background. Yeah, um, the horse on the golden background with the modern Ferrari. Yeah, is oh, that? The, is, yeah, the is, car, the, the car, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a black horse on a golden field, and I'm not exactly sure um what the history of it is like entirely but i do know or if it's like a legitimate um like uh uh what's it called like um a coat of arms but i do know that it used to be a donkey before so a black donkey on a golden field nice nice perhaps we don't know perhaps they're using some of the same imagery yeah yeah perhaps. um I'm talking, by the way, I'm talking about the, the logo, the Ferrari, the car, the logo, right? The the black stallion. Um, I also do know that uh, the, um, 
that uh, one of the nicknames for um, Enzo Ferrari was a, uh, a dragon. So they used to call him the dragon. Ah, those, those, old, those old European families that preserve all of, the, all of the old medieval symbols that ultimately are derived um, from the roots of Hellenistic culture, from Greek culture. That's gorgeous. I love that. I love that. Tonight has, tonight has been outstanding. I could sit here and look at her. She's mesmerizing. And um, I, I can't thank you enough, Matthias, for, for participating and for allowing us to be in a part of your process. Um, I think that we have the makings here of a real salon. And it's an honor, Matthias, to be able to, to participate with you. Yeah, thank you. This has been really fun. It's it's uh it's really fun and it's really great to get to do stuff like this. And also it's good to do something like this while you're you know, you're, while you're reading um while you're making your presentation, it inspires. So it's like, well, we can have multiple things happening together. And I know I'm not the only one in the group who has artistic ability to some extent. So um, it'd be interesting to see more people come out and like do more um, artwork for the community. Um, I know a lot of people are writers also, which is um, there's really great stuff on the Discord. People have been writing, especially doing research. So, so yeah. an encouragement in the Templum, right? Encouragement in the uh, in the sacred space of Saturn for us to yeah, bring we'll out do, um, this art. We'll do yeah, we'll do a pose for her. She'll she'll point at you like I want you to. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> like an fantastic. Uncle Sam thing, you know? Like I want you <laughs> to contribute. Yeah, you're scaring me. I don't know whether to be scared or to be excited. I don't know. I don't know. Calling on all artists out there. You see, um, the Virgin wants you. The Virgin wants you. She's enlisting and you for some dope artwork. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Mateus. And thank you everybody for coming tonight. And we'll thank see you. you. We'll see you Friday, uh, Friday at Sabbat. And, um, wow. Uh, I can't, I can't say, um, look at, look at, look at, just take one, one. Yeah. Give us one more. Hole. Oh, just like that angle. Look at that. Look at that hand people. Oh my God. Okay. I love it. Hail Satan.